Hello and welcome to Build Series coming to you live from London. I'm Will Best and we are about to be joined by two very talented guys who've joined forces on a very special project. So please welcome to the Build stage Andy Burrows and Matt Hay. <laughs> Sit down, sit down, make yourself sit. Yeah, you, there's an X to mark exactly oh, where you need to no, you're on. Yes. You, oh, you nailed it. That's, that's you absolutely nailed it. Lucky. Um, now, before we get started, as always, if you have any questions at all for the guys, you can get them in on social at Build Series London uh, or on Facebook in the comments. Um, Andy, Matt, hello, welcome. Hello. How are you both? We're good. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really good. I was feeling really wobbly. I had a long aeroplane ride last week and ride. I don't know. <laughs> we all know this one's outside yeah. the supermarket. It was outside Morrison's <laughs> yeah. for seven hours. <laughs> no, but I have not been sleeping well. Re I don't sleep well anyway, but really? last night I had an eight hours sleep, so Did I'm you? feeling triumphant today. Are you? Because sometimes if I get too much sleep, I'm terrible. Like if I have more sleep than I'm used to, it takes me two days to recover. I've never had I've that. <laughs> I've never <laughs> no, had that problem. No, no. It's a nice problem to have. Um, so, guys, you're here uh, because, uh, as I said at the start, you have joined forces on a very special project, but both approaching it from very different angles. So, Andy, people will probably best know you uh, from your time as uh, drummer in, in Razorlight. You've also been part of We Are Scientists, and you've had amazing albums out yourself. And, Matt, people know you as a writer, uh, a best-selling author. Let's mm -hmm. say it like it is. Um, why not? Why? Um, but now you have created something together. So which one of you wants to sort of say in a nutshell what it is you've done? That should probably be you. Right. I'm not making it nutshells. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, basically, I'm doing what I normally do, which is writing words. I do no singing. I do no piano playing or guitar playing or tambourine. And I didn't even do a bez on maracas. Really? You know, there's literally nothing audible <laughs> on there, but me, which is a very good thing for the album, I think. <laughs> right. But I did write all the words. That's quite a big. That's quite a big part. Yeah. It's um, a huge part, and it's the most. It's the most difficult part. The words. Well. Well, I mean, for. Well, not, 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 not for, for not, not, <laughs> yeah, exactly. not for him. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, and you and you created you created the music, and together. This, yeah. You, you've created this uh, an album, reasons to stay alive, mm. um, by the two of you, but. Th there's more to it than just you know two guys collaborating because effectively this album is an adaptation of your book of the same name, Matt. Well, well it's definitely. I mean, certainly that it shares the title and um, a lot of the songs I wrote were quite autobiographical and um, mental health related. Um, but when Andy talks about it, well, he can talk in a second. He he says he he feels the words very personal to him as well. So hopefully. There's a slightly um, universal element to it. But yeah, a lot of the songs are directly about mental health and even one of the, some of the ones that don't seem to be um, front and forward mental health songs, they, they, they come from that place. So the song Barcelona, which was, is the single that's out now, it sounds like a happy, sunny song, but it's actually about me having a sort of breakdown and remembering mm. the last um, happy holiday and last happy time, you know, like what you're meant to do when you're depressed, think of a happy time, and Barcelona was the happy time. So, But it's told from within a panic attack, basically. Right, right. And so, so what was it about uh, Matt's work, Andy, that drew you to him and, and, and how did this actually come about? Uh, am I right in thinking you got in touch with Matt? Yeah, I um on Valentine's Day. That is on really Valentine's sweet. Day. That's coming up soon. Uh, yes. It's oh. gonna be your anniversary. It's gonna It'll be, be our two year anniversary. anniversary. Oh wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's lovely. He didn't know how to approach me, so <laughs> you waited until Valentine's Day. <laughs> Trouble is you wrote an, a letter but you didn't say who you were. I didn't say no, I just got drunk Valentine. and anonymously sent him something. <laughs> yeah. Um no I yeah I was I uh I sent I sent Matt a tweet saying, "Would you know? Would you be interested in working with me?" I think because we both followed each other on a direct Twitter. message, wasn't it? Direct we were message, following. yes. Right. Okay. So you slid into his DMs. That's yeah. the yeah. That's what the kids are saying. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 And um, and he replied the following morning saying that he'd uh, you know he'd be up for meeting up and talking about some sort of collaboration, which at the time was um, I think I suggested something about some because I loved a boy called Christmas that book. Yeah. And I'd previously done the music for the Snowman and Snow Dog, and, and I, I sort of I guessed that that might m mean some kind of collaboration. Yeah, we were going to do a. Uh, I think the original concept was like a children's rock 
album, a rock album for children, or like a rock opera. Right, not, so not, not, be, not originally based on... No, not I mean, at all, we no. were sort of meandering around, not knowing necessarily what to do, but I think the idea was like Hansel and Gretel. That That's was the like, first yeah, that was it. concept. Nice. To do this sort of like slightly dark, Tim Burton-y kind of rock opera wow. thing. Um, which we still might do. But, sure. But, but then... The, I was starting to struggle with what to write, and um, so I, I was already writing a book called Notes on a Nervous Planet, which was a mental health book, and I was in that sort of space. So the logical thing you know, to write was, was more sort of autobiographical stuff, more real life stuff. Yeah, and when you first slid into Andy, <coughs> into Matt's DMs, Andy, what was, your, what was your approach? Did you lead with a gag? Did you go serious straight, or was it just a compliment? How did you first? It was quite. It was quite familiar. I was like, "Hey, Matt, do you want to work yeah. together?" Which I think perhaps straight looking to the back, point. <laughs> looking back, yeah. yeah. But I, fi I figured that you know, no emojis, no, no emojis. Did you emojis at all? There was, it was, it was, you no know, it was, is there an emoji for sort of work that represents work? I don't know whether that there is one. It's all just. It's all too silly and yeah. frivolous. Those emojis. Yeah, there was no yeah. emoji. There was no emoji use. No, we could no have, yeah, we could, we could have, um, no we could have mocked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no splash logos. <laughs> no no. It was Valentine's Day. Um, okay. Um, so, but you were already a fan of. You'd already read uh, Reasons to Stay Alive. Am I, I right? was. I was. At, I was reading it at right. that point. I, I'm not a huge reader. In fact. Um, you had the audio book. In fact, it was the first book you'd ever read. <laughs> the, idea, yes, the, the BFG and then Reasons to Stay Alive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I no Matt working with Matt has got me more uh, more into reading. Um but I had read A Boy Called Christmas and I really loved mm. it. I bought it for my eldest daughter and just read it myself. Um, <laughs> um Not to her, just not to yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. actually, no, I don't think it's still anything I've read. No. Um <laughs> Yeah, and then I and then I got into Reasons Sailor. I just thought, you know, I just thought think he's a phenomenal writer and I think he he was articulating things that I'm i I'm feeling and mm. I'm sure and that's why Reasons to Stay Alive I think has done so well as a book because everybody Finds it um, helpful and can yeah. relate to stuff, um, and I just thought it would be. I just, I just really thought it'd be wonderful to write with somebody who I felt such an affinity with from such a distance. Yeah. Well, should we take a quick look at some some of the? So we've got okay. reasons to stay alive uh, now. Let's let's Great. have a look. So that's the the lyric video for for reasons to stay alive. Yeah. So you get a sense there. You, I mean, lyric videos are always good, especially for you as a writer, yeah. because nice. you get to see your lyrics written down. Yes, yeah. and think, oh, I should have written something else. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, 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 yeah. I, mean, I think that was the second song. It was quite an early song, wasn't it? It was one. Of, I think that was the point at which we got what the album was going right. to be. About. Well, it was how to stop time. How to stop time. And then yeah, mm. that, that was pretty close behind it. Like. So th there's there's a lot of uh, it's quite an interesting angle to take to turn a book into uh, into an album, and it's not something you see done that much. I mean, it works a lot with you know films being adapted in. Uh, sorry, books being adapted into screenplays, but I couldn't find that many examples of it going sort of from book mm. to music form. No, I mean there are a few novelists who've written lyrics like. Um, Nick Hornby did an album with right. Ben Folds and Ian Rankin's written song for the Charlatans and things like that. But no, as an adaptation, as a as a book sort of overlap. Yeah, yeah. No, it's funny, but I definitely wasn't thinking too much of the book when I was writing the lyrics. So was, I was just writing, trying to make them sound, look like songs yeah. and to actually explore things that a book couldn't do. Because I think there's something about music which is more directly emotional in a way and you don't have to do too much explaining you can just sort of put the emotion out there mm. and th that's certainly what Andy picked up I think I didn't know how they were going to sound but when I heard them it was like they could only sound like that mm. as soon as I heard it and and you've said before Andy that you've you've tried making music to other people's lyrics before mm. but you've never been that comfortable with it this was the first time that you felt that it really did resonate yeah absolutely I think if you're trying to sort of you know, because obviously I'm, I made this album on my own in a musical sense, and I think when you're doing something like that and you're singing, it's quite hard to take on board somebody else's, um, you know, lyrics and, and, and heartfelt emotions mm. and, and sing them as if they're your own, because often you don't, you wouldn't say things in the same way, or you wouldn't, there was just something about Matt's words, although he does it a hell of a lot better than I do, there was just something about it that felt um, immensely personal mm. and, you know, very e really easy to write music to. I, I really this, this was the most enjoyable writing process I've ever. I, mean, I, was, I, was, I was writing for him. I wasn't just writing, um, you know, f for them to be sung by. I was listening to a lot of Andy's music while I was writing them. So I was definitely writing 
with him in mind. And mm. I think there's a good sort of fit because we're sort of unabashedly emotional, sentimental wrecks. <laughs> and it was a kind of, well, not, no, you're not necessarily. No, right, I, but I, 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 like, speak for yourself, I mate. No, no, I, yeah. I'm totally with you there. Yeah. Um, but there have been examples of. Uh, uh, s singles based on books. I've got a few here. Okay. I thought maybe we could play a game and see oh whether God. either of you, maybe you could compete against each other. Oh. See if we can drive a wedge between this beautiful friendship right. that blossomed on Valentine's I've couple years ago. I've never won anything with you. <laughs> you, you he'll, he's, he'll win. I'm okay. competitive. Oh, oh, good. That's excellent. All right, then. Play along. Play along at home. Um, so, uh, famously, Bright Eyes by Art Gar Garfunkel was based on a children's book. But which children's book? Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. You, you just you oh, let, no, I you know, don't you? Oh, hang, on. I know, hang on, I yeah, do know what on. it is. Yeah. Yes, I do. And Go I, on I, then. I, no, no, but I do. But I can't remember. Watership, yeah, Watership down. down yeah. Watership down. Good. No, it, saying I know it, but I can't. <laughs> I know, it doesn't, it doesn't, count. Count. <laughs> doesn't count. One point. Yeah. Watership down. It seems a bit mean. I, well, I don't know why bright eyes and watership down. Because rabbits famously terrible eyes, don't they? That's, uh, <laughs> that's a mixomatosis <laughs> joke. They never go down well. Um, uh, what about this one? Do you remember Tapao? Yes. Yes. China in your hand. Oh, yeah, right. I don't, yeah? know, I don't know if that's... Do you remember that one? Is that based on a book? It's based on a book. Don't push too far <sighs> your dreams. Uh, no? Yeah, yes. I had the picture. I get a point for this. I'm singing. showing my age, but I had the picture um, seven inch. Single. Oh, yeah. Well, did, maybe there was don't a clue on that. But I, I can't remember it being... Anywhere on the sleeve notes it's no. saying it was based on a novel. Well, it was, in fact, based on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Who'd have thought? A um, bit more of a modern one. Um, Firework by Katy Perry, yeah. which starts with the immortal line, do Great you ever song. feel like a plastic bag? Floating. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. we've all been there. Do you know what, what book that was based on? Firework. You're thinking plastic bags, <laughs> books. Uh, they don't. Give us a clue. Uh, um, a clue... Uh, is it a children's book or an adult it's, book? It's an, it's a, it's, no, it's not a children's book. It was a famous American author who was writing in the 50s, a beat poet. Uh, on the Road. Oh. On the Road by Jack, Jack Kerouac. Kerouac. Who'd have thought? I said Kate, it at the same time as you. You said the same time. So there you go, you get one get point. It's <laughs> one point apiece. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, then. Um, but that's quite that's quite unexpected from Katy Perry yeah. to come out with that. And it's not yeah necessarily what it conjures up. No. I love a bit of Katy Perry. There you go. But you do see a lot of um, plastic bags on the side of roads. So... That could yeah. be the link. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, last one. <laughs> you get one each. Right, okay, so you've got one each. This is the final one. It's a little bit easier, so it's fastest fingers first. It's called, it's a song by Leonard Nimoy called <clears throat> The Ballad of Bilbo Baggins. Oh, The Hobbit. Absolutely right. There you go. <laughs> and he's won even a round of applause. He was See? totally not expecting that. <laughs> totally let, not expecting that. that. Um, brilliant stuff. Um, so uh, there are some other excellent musicians that feature on the LP, Andy, that you that you pulled in. Um, Muses, Dom Howard, yeah. Tom Smith from from Editors. Yes. How did you get those guys involved? And are they people that you work with a lot? Um, yeah, they're just very very good friends of mine. And uh, Tom Smith, Editors, I've got like a sort of a side project with called Smith and Burrows. Very nice. You can see how we did that. Yeah, it's good. Um, Dom Not Howard, based on any books or anything. No, no like books. No. <laughs> um, uh, Dom Howard and I have been friends for years, and he did a bit of drumming on the Snowman Snow Dog soundtrack. You know, Tom and I work a lot together. And then the other guy was Keith Murray. Ah, yeah. We are scientists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did that by being in that band. That's a good way to get to, to know, get around, get yeah. to know yeah. some other yeah. musicians. Yeah. yeah, be in the band with them. Um, and uh, but the song Barcelona you mentioned. I think we've got some visuals from Barcelona as well that we can play because it's a beautiful video. It's we, wonderful. Ma maybe. Nah, we don't. Don't worry about that. We don't need that. Um, but uh, so, th so that was the. Li there they are. Look at that. Excellent. There's so me. There's you. Yeah. You see Matt at some point when we yes, come down here. Uh, Uncanny. For, for like 1.5 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. And I uh, look like this big ginger potato head, which it obviously is. <laughs> there's, I don't know where they got that idea from. Um, so, so this song, as you said, was about an amazing experience that you had yes. uh, in Barcelona. But, but the book itself was originally written. Uh, Partly from your experiences in Ibiza, yeah. wasn't it? it well, was we used to go to Barcelona a lot. Well, actually, the first time we went to Ibiza was on the ferry from Barcelona. I'm talking about me and my girlfriends in the dark ages of the end of the 1990s. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, so I had three hedonistic summers in Ibiza when I was sort of young and slightly out of control, uh, which wasn't very good for my mental health. And uh, the third year, I had a full-blown... When, when I had... Just as I was having to go back to London, I had a full-blown breakdown which was the start of all sorts of mental health problems I, I 
um, battled with for about three years. But yeah, at the time, we'd had a weekend in Barcelona on our last year in Ibiza. And um, yeah, that was what that, mm. that's about. But it's interesting that, so that you released the book a couple of years ago, <coughs> but it's interesting that it feels like now mental health and specifically depression and anxiety are so at the forefront uh, of kind of national conversation, really. What do you think it is that's kind of sparked that, that change and, and made that debate so open? Well, I think all kinds of things. I think, I think the, the internet age has a lot of problems, but one of the good things about it is it allows people to talk and to find information. And I think, I think that's had a contagious effect. I noticed certainly just writing a book about mental health that uh, as soon as you share an experience, you hear lots of experiences back. So mm. it has this sort of viral effect. And I think everyone, um, the last few years, everyone's been really ready to talk about it because all kinds of mental health issues are specific to now and lots of anxiety disorders and stuff, they're on the, the rise. You know, yeah. there's, there's some good news, you know, like suicide figures the last couple of years have been slightly down. But, um, you know, all sorts of things like self-harm, eating disorders, um, bipolar dis um, not, not bipolar, uh, borderline personality disorder, they're all sort of rising. And I think there are specific problems to do with the way we live in the 21st century, and people are wanting to talk about it. Because we're at this stage now where, where technology is um, very quickly evolving, mm. faster than ever before, and we're overloaded with everything. But we're not really taking a step back and thinking what it's doing to us, because we haven't fundamentally changed biologically in like 10,000 years as mm. human beings. So we're like this very outdated um, hardware running the sort of software mm. of modern life. And um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's a very, I think it's an issue that everyone's aware of, but it affects everyone um, to some extent. We all have mental health, just as we all have physical health. We're not necessarily ill, but we, we all are on a scale somewhere. Mm. And, and it's interesting you say how, you know, you, you put something out on social media, you get a lot of positive stuff back. Yeah, absolutely. And, and those, the, obviously the words that you wrote in your book and now the words that are in the album really resonate with people. Do you each have a specific lyric that resonates most with you that if you could kind of sum up reasons to stay alive, what would that be? Well, for me, it, it's probably um, the first verse of Reasons to Stay Alive, the song. Um, which is about, um, I think it's, this, you'll know it word for word, but the sea glitters like a gold uh, that you'll never own. You're talking to yourself, you're miles away from home. And um, that, that was literally me um, standing very near a cliff edge because we used to live in a, a, a very nice villa in Ibiza, rent free, long story. But um, we, yeah, I, I, I fantasized in my sort of last week there when I was swamped with panic and depression and terror of throwing myself off that edge and I nearly did that. So that was the sort of most sort of painful moment, being, having this most beautiful Mediterranean view in front of me and it meaning absolutely nothing because I was in this sort of state of pain and so that, that for me was a sort of cathartic moment because it, it never feels painful going back there people always say oh is it painful sort of writing about that stuff but actually for me it always feels like letting go because it's it's always kind of there so the moment you talk about it or write about it it feels comforting because it's sort of sharing something what about you well i, I found this whole process right writing the music to matt's words uh, extremely cathartic and elating you know what i mean i i feel like i'm not I'm not, I've never been, I don't think I've ever gone to such a dark place as what Matt describes with depression, but I've suffered with anxiety a lot over the years and I've had a lot of depression around me. And I think that I've actually found this whole experience very, you know, sitting with his words, mm. like people do with, with his books, has, has been an immense help to me. Um, but I, I don't know, I think I'm still, I, I haven't worked out, not that any of us are ever, you can't cure this, but you can find ways of trying to improve your mental health, mm. I think that's right, isn't it? And for me, and for yeah. me, one of the <laughs> just most recently right, working on Matt's lyrics has been incredible for me. Mm. Uh, in the same way, I guess people get that from his books. Definitely. Well, listen, guys, thank you so much for coming in and thank talking you. to us. Congratulations uh, on the album because it came out on Friday, so yes. cop that. Um, as they say, um, I've already listened to it. It's brilliant. Um, and you. and yeah, guys, give a please, please give a big round of applause. Thank you, thank you very much. Hey, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.